Okay, we have Coach Harson. He wants to go straight to questions, so we'll get done. First person to get coach is on your right on the end. Yes, Mark Murphy from Inside the Auburn Tigers. You got seven returning starters on the offensive line. How long is it going to take you to sort out who your five starters are going to be, and when would you like to? You know, what's going to be the process for getting that done? Yeah, well, we got to do it sooner than later. I know that we've already been in the process of that, watching these guys this summer. You, you watch them in training. You watch how they lift. You see the strength development uh, that they're making. And you get a pretty good idea of the guys that are, are really putting themselves in a position to compete and be the starters. Uh, you know, Nick Brahms is a guy that played center for us. He's leading, does a great job um, in all the workouts. Um, he is a leader on our team. and so. You know, there's a guy that, that's going to be playing for us uh, at that center position. And, and then there's going to be a lot of competition because I've seen, you know, from all of our, our O-line and D-line in particular, one thing about Coach Pittman's program uh, and being an ex-O-lineman himself, right, the O-line and D-line, there's a, there's a lot of focus on that, the strength, the power, uh, the short area quickness, the things that we have to have to really be uh, elite in those two areas uh, has been a major focus. So our guys have gotten bigger, they've gotten stronger. Uh, which we need up front on both sides. And when we get into that first week, you know, usually how our camp works, uh, we have a couple days where we're split. We have some of the new guys, selected vets in one practice. We have the returners in another, um, some of our veteran players. And then we bring them everybody together. And we have a scrimmage on day eight. And after that scrimmage, you got a pretty good idea of where you're going with your two deep. And then you have one more, and you're kind of finalizing. You're too deep. You're finalizing some of the special teams, and you start getting into game prep. So these guys are going to have, you know, 12 to 14. Or excuse me, 12 to, to 16 to 17 practices, and and you're going to be using a different combination of O line because you want to see guys that can play guard and play tackle because you need that, uh, and that's important to me. One year. Um, at Boise State, we were 12 and one, but we had, uh, I think we we're 13 and one, but we had 11 different combinations on the O-line just because of injuries and different things. So you wanna train guys where they can play tackle, play guard, you have your center position. Um, and what you do is you, you wanna get those, uh, certainly five, but you wanna get those seven that you really have in the rotation and, and who's the next best to go in there. And sometimes you got to move a, an, a player that's in out to tackle and bring in this next guy that might be a guard. And, and that, that's what Coach Friend, um, our offensive staff, that's what they focus on. We had a meeting about that the other day, and, and Coach Friend's got a great handle on it, you know, how he wants to do that. And, and so we'll start getting to that fairly quickly in camp. We'll go to your left on the front row, Coach. Gianna Hahn, AL.com, two-part question. So the SEC commissioner, your athletic director, Alan Green, and former coach and national champion, Gene Chizik, have all made strong statements about vaccinations. First, are you yourself vaccinated? And if not, how are you talking to your players about getting vaccinated when this is something the school and um, the league are really promoting? Yeah. No, the, the, yes, everybody's made strong statements. Now, like I said before, I mean, there's so much information out there, and what we can do is educate our players on the vaccination, what that means, certainly what the uh, SEC is requiring as far as the numbers and those things. And like I said before, uh, and I've said it with our players, this is a personal decision. Uh, we have medical folks. Dr. Goodlett is phenomenal. Um, he does a tremendous job, and he's available for all of our players, staff, anybody that wants to get it or, ha or needs more information on it. Um, I have not asked our players. I have not asked our staff. Um, you know, I'm not, and I'm not going to make a comment on, on my situation either because I wouldn't expect you know, my players to be asked that or the staff to be asked that. And that's something uh, that we started a long time ago. And so we're going to continue our education. We're going to continue to keep doing what we've been doing. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, I think uh, the last five months uh, we've had no positives and our guys have been doing the things we've asked them to do and following the protocols necessary in order for us uh, to go out there and, and prepare ourselves to play this season. And I expect nothing less. Uh, and we'll continue with the education and continue on with the things that we're doing and, and then also respect our players and coaches on our staff and their opinions and, and the decisions that they make. Coach, to your right on the second row. 
Coach Bill Cameron, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Uh, you've obviously got Bo here with you. You brought in T.J. Finley through the transfer portal. Uh, is there a quarterback? Will there be a quarterback competition? What do you expect from those two and your offense? Let me just say this. Every year that I've coached quarterbacks, there's a quarterback competition. All right? And here's what I mean by that. You have, you have your returners. They've played. They've proven themselves. They've been in games and all that. But you also have guys that are hungry to play, and they've also been working. They don't want to be backups. They're doing whatever they can to get on the field. We're going to have a pecking order. Bo will start when we get out into camp. He'll be the first guy that rolls out there. There's a pecking order. Uh, T.J. Finley is going to have his chance to run with the ones as well. Grant Loy will have his chance to run with the ones as well. I've always done it that way. And then we'll find out with those reps how those guys uh, execute, how those guys handle uh, that group. And, and then what do they deserve from there? And it's going to be at every position. Uh, and so, you know, that's always, is there a controversy, anything like that? No, I mean, there's not, there's not a controversy on our team, but there's competition every single day. And, you know, my job as the head coach is to play the best players. And the best players are the ones that go out there and take advantage of the opportunities that they get from the coaching staff and they maximize it. Those guys have no control over that. The quarterback, I control that. Coach Bobo controls that. You're going to get 10 reps, maximize them. You're going to get five, make the most out of them. And, you know, when guys start worrying about that, I think that comes from so much external and, and other people in their lives. Like, you're not getting this, you're not getting that. Well, what are you getting? And that's my job is to make sure they understand, no, this is what you are getting. This is what you have today. Maximize it. And this is what we want to see from you. Uh, and so TJ has done a really good job. I've, I've liked uh, just his whole approach. He's come in. He's really dove into just uh, getting into that playbook and understanding the details of what we're trying to accomplish, getting players out there, throwing with them, uh, trying to do everything he can to put himself in a position uh, to go out there and compete. And, and if he uh, has an opportunity to play, that he's ready for it. And the other guys have done the same thing. And so that is my full expectation of every player on this team uh, to not come into a camp and be like, I'm good. You know, right? Come into camp and get better and prepare and know that you've got somebody on your team that hey, you love and appreciate and all that, but he's nipping at your heels now. And he wants to play too. As, when you have that as a coach, when you've got three deep and everybody's competitive and everybody's good, you bring out the best in every one of your players. And I think that's what you, know, you want to create, depth and competition on a football team. Coach, to your left on the end of the front row. Coach Ryan Hennessy, NBC 13 here in Birmingham. It's been uh, quite a year to be hired as a head coach in the SEC from the new, uh, Christmas Eve presser to introduce you to all the way to now. And I hear it took a while for you to even meet the parents of the players. So what do Auburn fans want to know about you outside of the football field? What, what does Coach Harson do for fun? What, what's something about Coach Harson that Auburn fans want to know about on a personal side? Oh, good question. Well, I did. It did take time. When we, we got to the families via Zoom, uh, in order to meet him, it wasn't until a day that I had a chance to truly in person get in front of our families, which is difficult. Uh, their sons are playing for you. They want to know who you are and, and what you stand for. And, um, you know, I'm very committed to the game. Um, I love what I do. Uh, I love the people that I'm around. Um, and when I'm not at football, I'm with family. And when I'm with family, uh, we're having a good time. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get food. Uh, a lot of times we're gonna we're gonna be together. Um, we're gonna be on the lake. That's one of the things that I really enjoy. I'm gonna get on the boat. I'm gonna be on the lake. Uh, I was a, a skier and then a wakeboarder and jumping the wake and catching an edge and slamming your eyeballs into the water. I had enough of that, so I ended up getting a boat you can surf behind and go 11 miles an hour and throw a rope in, and if you fall, you just melt into the water. And so that is, that is my thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find some smooth water at 9 o'clock in the morning, and my wife and whoever we can find, the flag is going to jump in the boat, and I'm going to get out there, and I'm going to surf, throw the rope in, and just be free for a while and, and play some good music and enjoy that. Um, other than that, you know, uh, I, I'm into cars, um, working on my dad and I, you know, we put together a, a 69 Mustang Mach 1, and I say we, but he's doing most of it right now. And, um, you know, that's something that he and I, have, you know, have talked about for a long time. So uh, I get a chance to kind of participate in that a little bit. You know, I know the motor, I know the transmission, I know the rear end and some of those things. And 
Uh, when it's all said and done, it'll be a beast, and you know we're figuring out how to get this thing finalized and and on its way to Auburn, Alabama. But uh, my main focus, and always will be, is my family. My wife, uh, she is unbelievable, and uh, I am so fortunate to have her and and uh, in my life and. She really leads the family and, and the things that we do together. I mean, we just have fun. We, we have a good time. I love my kids. And, and like I said before, they love being in Auburn. And, and, you know, early on, I'm shocked because of where we came from. And I didn't know that. And that's the biggest concern as a father. You know, is your family going to thrive? And they are. So we're having a good time. We're enjoying it. Um, I probably eat a little too much of shrimp and grits right now. So I got to be careful on that. But uh, other than that, Man, we're happy to be in Auburn, and you know those are some of the things we do for fun. Coach, front row, on the left. Coach Tyler Shaw with KBTX TV and College Station. What's your main focus as you go into year one at Auburn, and you know what are your expectations for this team? <clears throat> Number one is is that we connect with our players, you know, and I want to know, and, and what I mean by that is it's not always that they're you're hanging out with them all the time, like you know what what. It's important to them. What are their goals? What do they want to accomplish? Uh, that'll tell you a lot about your team, and you got to put all that together. Each individual has a goal and a dream and something they want to accomplish. Bring that together and then help them understand, all right, you can do these things, all right, but also w within how we're trying to accomplish our goals as a team. All right, so understanding that, get to know our guys, and then uh, really simply just playing good football. I, I want to see our guys play good football every day. I want to eliminate bad football, and I want our guys to understand what that looks like and, and what it takes to really do that. So there's a blueprint for that, and it's every single day. And it's how you approach uh, the evening and get yourself prepared and maybe write something down that you want to accomplish the next day and get a, a visual, you know, or sit there and visualize for 10 minutes, you know, what you want to do and wake up in the morning, expect to be successful and show up and do the thing, really show up actually, show up, be on time, be there, all right, care about what you're doing, trust that this plan in place is gonna get you better and then follow that throughout the day and, and repeat. You know, that's, that's what we have to accomplish. Um, there's a way to be great at things, not just football in my opinion, and you know, I want guys to have that. I want them to have that formula. I want them to understand it. They can use it however they want. I just want them to know it. And so it helps us with our football team. It helps them in their life. And when they're done playing football, they're ready for whatever's next. All right? They have a plan. They have habits. They have a process. Um, they're not going to sit there and think, what the hell am I going to do now? Like, you know what? You can't play the game any longer, but you're always going to be a competitor. So what's next? All right, here's how you're going to attack it. Here's a plan to do it. This is what you learned through being an Auburn football player. Go. And, you know, the most exciting things should be happening from that point on. And um, getting that, because I'm passionate about that, I care about uh, self-improvement and self-development um, because I know it's going to help us as a football team as well. Uh, but those are things that are important to me in making sure our guys and, and coaches understand. Wish we had time for all the questions, but our final one is going right over here, Coach, on the left on the end. Hey, Coach, Max Cohan, Way 31 in Huntsville. I know the transition from Idaho to Alabama is a pretty crazy one. I made it myself. I'm kind of wondering for you, what have been the biggest adjustments you've had to make both on and off the field? Yeah, you know, the, the biggest adjustments now, one is, you know, everybody asks me, are you ready for the humidity? And, you know, I am, right? I, I don't know that yet, but I'm, in my mind, I've prepared myself. I've heard it so much. I am. And I'll tell you what, I've been in three degree weather games where I got Vaseline on my face and I'm drinking chicken broth, all right, in between series and all that. You know what? I'm ready for the humidity. All right. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, as far as just, you know, uh, being, being in this conference, uh, being at a place like Auburn, football is really important. I love it. Uh, football is really important at places I've been, um, but here it's really important, and, and I enjoy that. And through our football team, you know, we can make an impact. When you're on that field and you see a, a disciplined, tough team play that believes they can win, and um, I think that makes, you know, your fan base and people proud, and that's something that, that I feel very strongly about. I feel it in the community. So uh, it makes you want to show up every single day and just do whatever you can to get your team prepared to go out there and play like that and represent Auburn 
uh, the way that we all hope we can. So um, I've always cared about the teams I've been on and their performances and, and you know, being successful. Uh, I'm just excited about uh, being here in particular, just how important it is, um, how much support we have, how much I've heard from people that just say, you know what, we love Auburn and you believe it. And so to be a part of that, to be a part of this kind of environment, um, that's what's most exciting, you know, probably different, and, and what I'm looking forward to most. Coach, thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you. That concludes the electronic room.